Ladies and gentlemen, we are live broadcasting from the depths of the Seattle Comedy Underground, located in beautiful Pioneer Square, Seattle, Washington. I'm Joe Hicks. This is a Tight 60 podcast. Joining me tonight, as always, is my good friend, fellow comedian, raconteur, manager of the Comedy Underground, and uh, co-host of the Tight 60 podcast, Mr. James Milton. Hello, hello. Good afternoon. And uh, tonight, our very special guest, uh, this week's headliner here at the Comedy Underground. You may have seen him from all the late shows that matter. Uh, Craig Ferguson, Jimmy Kimmel, uh, David Letterman, winner of the Los Angeles, or I'm sorry, the Las Vegas World Series of Comedy. Uh, his comedy album, uh, Cut Above Stupid, is available on Amazon and iTunes. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Andrew Norelli. Hello. Thank Hooray. you. Thanks for having me. Thanks for joining us. Yeah, of course. You guys, you guys how could I not... How could I not? Yeah, that's what I was saying. You know saying. how many other events I turned down to be here? <laughs> well, with digs like these, I mean, we offer you ice water. You know, there's a Starbucks I know, I come the in, I get the ice water. <laughs> tap water. Right. <laughs> I get, uh, um, um, what else do you guys have? You have a coffee table for me to put my feet upon. Mm-hmm. True, true. Mm-hmm. I feel like royalty. All the luxuries. All right, now I know what Kim Kardashian lives like. Exactly the same yeah. as... A basement in Pioneer. Just a little I, bet, I bet everywhere she goes, she gets off her tap water and uh, something to put her feet upon. <laughs> and that's at, it. At the least. At the least. That's the least they could do for her. So so how's Seattle treating you? Uh, you did a show uh, last night, right, here at the Underground? It's good. It's good. I just saw somebody uh, relieving themselves in the alley. So um, You'll get that a lot here. Right, mm-hmm. right. That was totally... Uh, Normal. Right, right. You almost feel like you didn't visit if you don't see that. <laughs> So um, that was it. Was funny because somebody was leading the, a tour group, and I and I had wondered if the tour group got to see that, mm. since that's one of the more important. That's um, that's actually one of the main sites. stops along the tour group. Is here right. It is. It's strange. Network. The Seattle comedy uh, or the Seattle Underground tour, as they call it, it's bizarre. They take you to all the seediest, uh, right, piss soaked alleys uh, in the area. And then you stand around and they say, well, I know it doesn't look like much now, but 200 years ago, right. this place was just crawling with syphilitic horse. And right. Just imagine it was a beautiful place. So that's kind of the way the underground tour works. Totally. I don't, you you I pay like 10 that. bucks for it. They they're give like, you a drink they're afterwards. Like, it's, the diseases have just changed 200 years <laughs> ago. Right. This, is what, this is where ecstasy and condoms have brought right, us, basically. Totally. Now, it's, uh, now it's a beautiful, brave new world. Right. So, you know, that's $10. They should do that. Evolution of diseases in downtown San Diego and downtown Seattle. This this is this is become uh, hepatitis C. It was once uh, polio. I'm sure I'm sure this is ground zero for a lot of that. Ricketts was the main thing. And now it's, you know, now it's. uh, Well, we've grown immune to those. Thanks to such exposure that now they. Yeah, this is ground zero. That's why I come back. I mean, Seattle literally was built on the backs of. Whores and drunk lumberjacks. It's a, it's a beautiful story. Right. Well, I think uh, everything... most, most port cities, right? right. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. what Portland port cities well. were built on. Yeah. yeah. Portland, yeah. that's where everyone used to get Shanghai. Right. Like the original term of Shanghai, where you're at a bar, you have a drink, someone hits you over the head, you fall through a sliding thing through the floor, and then you sliding wake up and you're, you're, on, you're on a boat to China. Well, I believe. I believe really? Skin, that's a true story. Well, the and you're re- on a boat to China for what? Uh, I don't know. Merchant, How come I don't know this? How come you were not my seventh or eighth grade <laughs> <laughs> history teacher? You're on a boat to calling, China man. for what? Uh, I think it was like a merchant thing, right? Weren't they on merchant ships and stuff? And so they were they were selling like, you as a slave or having you work on the ship? Not selling you as a slave, but sort of indentured servitude. I mean, you woke up, and that's the term Shanghai. You woke up, and oh, you and you were in, in Shanghai, Shanghai, like literally. Yeah, wow, so I you did you not know, know you that. Had, you had to learn something new every day. Manny's Pale Ale in Portland, and then you <laughs> woke up in But then what were you doing in Shanghai? What were they making you do for work? Uh, I, think, I think maybe this... I the, didn't watch that far into the Discovery <laughs> Channel special. This, okay. this, this, I think this info needs to be <laughs> All right, is that what you're doing? You're just giving me like the intros to Discovery Channel shows? He, he was, I mean, he was yeah. drunk, watched, kind of. He was drunk at 3 a.m. He's yeah. pretty sure that's what he saw happen on the television. <laughs> he doesn't know. Do you ever meet people like that? All of their knowledge is literally like headlines from news articles? No. That's, the That's me. their knowledge. Like, they obviously didn't read the article. They just read the headline. Yeah. So when you ask a question, they're like, I don't know. I have no idea. I didn't. The worst The worst is the people who their entire body of knowledge now has been culled from YouTube videos. Like, oh, everything geez. they know can be encapsulated yes. in one five-minute, like, video. And it's usually, right. like, the most bizarre, insane, like, conspiracy theories. And they never imaginable. question anything. Yeah, they saw it on the Internet. It's, it's so not, funny. Yeah. yeah it's the, not like anybody can post shit on the Internet, you know. That I shit know. goes through a vetted process there for sure. 
I no, we need we need more skepticism. I mean, that's, I'm that's always pulling zeitgeist though to my to my friends. I just want to, you know, spread the word about the fake economy. You know, and, it, uh, it's crazy. Right. When, right. when the internet the first came theories. out, they talked about what a beautiful, amazing thing it would be. This information exchange, how it would further technology and information. I would argue it's made us dumber. And well, now it's just worldstarhiphop.com and it's, Facebook. Yeah, right. That's what are on my favorites list. It's and I'm getting <laughs> enraged by the misleading headlines. You know, completely fake Click headline baiting. like clickbait. Yeah, that is. When when will people just stop clicking? When are we going to reach a critical point where everybody realizes oh, you man. can't trust any headline? You can only trust an actual website. That's what you should trust is the brand of a website, and read everything off that website and don't click away from it. Like Drudge Report, right? For example, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> That's the thing. People will click on anything, man. That's the thing. Because you're sitting in front of your computer, you're home, alone, nobody can see. Like, who cares what really pops up? So people are just click maniacs. But that's okay you know? if it's like, accurate. I'm okay with getting me to click on something that's actually <laughs> accurate. But don't be like, Scarlett Johansson's dying, you know, and then you <laughs> click on it and you're dying to laugh. And I mean, <laughs> don't do that's that HuffPo. to me. That's what HuffPo does. Yes, they do. Which is, the worst. which is unfortunate because it's a pretty good website. Yeah, isn't HuffPo just a collection of shit they found everywhere else though? And they it's well, an aggregate, they, but they have a lot of good original content. That's why it's frustrating. Huh? You know, they don't obviously they need to do that to keep paying the bills. But you know, I so I guess my point is just don't click away from HuffPo. <laughs> just stay that's the on only HuffPo. website. Make that your home page and never leave. As long as all your information comes from HuffPo, you're solid. You're a Fine. scholar. You're an internet <laughs> scholar and a gentleman. Oh my! Well, thanks for coming out. Um, and uh, and uh, and pitching HuffPo, it's uh, it's great that uh, you are a licensed <laughs> spokesman. Is that correct? Yeah. Well, you know, I just uh, made thirteen dollars by <laughs> plugging them. <laughs> that Adrian, uh, what's her name? Adriana Huffington or whatever. Yes. Adriana yeah, Huffington. Adriana Huffington. Huffington. I think that people need to. I need to start doing impressions. That was good. That people would be huge. People need to understand that the government does not tell you. <laughs> what you want to hear? They they are working on behalf of the corporations. Yeah, so you? that's either Ariana Huffington or Mother Teresa, right? Yeah, right. It's or, so uh, close. Or, or Latka, Andy Kaufman's foreman. There you go. Yeah, you're right. That was pretty close <laughs> to his character. Yeah. Um. No, I think Ariana Huffington's great. I think she's very. I think she did something a little suspect. She did kind of a, a, a vanity piece, didn't she? Write something called like the three. What was it? Golden rules or something? You know, these successful people get successful, and then they write a book on sharing their secrets. You share, yes, exactly. Yeah. It's usually no secret at all. Self help. It's literally nothing. It's like yeah. just do what you want and do it a lot. Yeah, yeah, it, yeah. It's completely ridiculous. And then you're not only that you're giving advice to people that probably it wouldn't apply to. I mean, Ariana Huffington probably has some like advanced education, right? Journalism. I'm assuming, yeah. She probably has like a high journalism degree. She's probably brilliant. I figured she just married a rich dude, right? Like, isn't that how, like, I don't know. I, I think I, she's very, very talented. You know? <laughs> you know, I, hey, I, I, I'm, whoa. A, I'm a misogynist. It's true. I hate Somebody all over there is like, ain't no broad can make it on her own. <laughs> I'm surprised they let her out of the kitchen. How did this happen? Jesus. Basically, I hate all women. That's what I'm saying. No, That's the I think point she's I'm trying probably to make. Super, a little early in the podcast, smart. but okay. <laughs> No, she, it's true. She's on that uh, real time with Bill Maher all the time. She seems oh. well spoken and no, intelligent. No, she is. She's she's incredibly intelligent. Um, I just think it's funny when um, it's like when uh, you know, e- either incredibly brilliant people give advice. I mean, their their first advice should be 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 incredibly brilliant, like me. <laughs> Step one. That should be yeah. the first piece of advice. Yeah. Be a genius. Have an IQ of one sixty five. And that's why it's hard to take advice from them, you know? Yeah. Well, that's the problem. If that was step one, everybody would instantly put the book down and be like, well, you know what? This isn't for me. I'm not buying it. I just sure. saw on page no, one well, that of I'm course. excluded Yeah, we from all know at the end of the day. No, you have to parcel stuff. out step one. That's right, you know. Over the course of 300 pages. It's better than That's those another other. thing I don't like. Right. It's spread out to fill content. Yeah. Well, it's been yeah. well, everyone has a self-help book out, though. Now, I mean, even this, this chick, Corinne Stevens or someone who... Her nickname is was Superhead. She's like a rap Superhead. rap groupie. Yeah, yeah. Who blew Jay Z right. and all these guys. And then she came up with a self help book that's pretty. It's pretty much you know. It's like be an independent woman and and you go girl. It's see that's a little counterintuitive to her actual. Ariana Huffington wasted all that time in journalism school. She could have just been blowing rappers, man. Boom. That's it's, 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 If I was, I a, submitted that article to HuffPo. It did not. <laughs> 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 <I> mean, <it's, laughs> 
<laughs> God, HuffPo, they're so closed off. Ugh. Oh, I'm waiting for OJ's uh, how-to book. That's uh, that's going to be a huge motivational seller right there. I'm excited about it. It's better than... Where is he now? OJ is he in, jail is he still, in, right? in prison yeah. for how long? Does anyone know? Uh, ten anyone? years or something? Anyone. Listeners, Google that for us. <laughs> research team. Where's your research <laughs> team here? Crack research team. We'll get, we'll get on that. We'll, we'll on have that. the numbers on that later. We'll, we'll, we'll fix that in post. It's it's better than like a lot of these packages you'll see like on the internet that are like how to get rich like overnight or whatever, and then you send in ten bucks or whatever, and the the package you get back says, okay, basically do what I just did. I Tell everybody they can get totally. rich overnight if they send you ten dollars. That I almost like think. though. That that's more sensible. <laughs> you don't have to have an IQ of one sixty five or whatever. Right, to pull that's that more sensible. I, I, there was something floating around. This might be a little bit tangential, and uh, yeah, I just used that word. That's a bit um, oh, tangential. But there was something floating around Facebook, like fifteen things that you need to stop doing, and to be a, you know to be successful. And the fifteen quick, things fifteen were, is a lot. <laughs> it is. That's the first problem. Yeah, I'm going to lose interest after three or four. Really. Steps, I, I think number one was um, be able to read fifteen things. That was, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm out. I'm tapping. But they were all the most vague generic things you've ever heard. It was like, number one, you know, stop giving up on yourself. Number two, stay away from people that don't help you achieve your goals. Number three, you know, it was, I don't understand. It was basically telling you everything that is not only common sense. Oh, we have one of the listeners yeah, calling getting, in. The, the phone lines are blowing up. In. Cleveland, go ahead. Yeah. Apparently, this uh, 15 things is a huge hot button topic. The phone lines are blowing up. It's, it's probably amazing. the person it's... that wrote that 15 <laughs> things piece. <laughs> My 15 things work. Well, yeah, yeah I, I think a lot of those uh, recommendations, they, they, they have the validity of an internet meme. You know what I mean? Yes, it could just exactly. be a picture of a whale, you know, breaching, and then it says something like, you know, Open your heart to kindness. Right. I, I'm trying to do that. I've been right. doing that for 33 fucking years, I think. Yeah, but as soon as you see the whale photo, then it all makes sense. Then right. it all comes Cause, together. Because whales do that. Yeah, you That's know, why exactly, whales are so you know. successful. That's I met it. a whale. <laughs> he has three companies that he started. and um, you, You've been waiting your whole life it. for that well, photo yeah, on the yeah. internet. Uh, yeah, it, it is weird because it's like you want to be positive, but you don't. You don't know what becomes just mindless cliches and what is real right. positivity. Where Where is that line? That's a good point. And I think positivity also, I don't think it's really a, a good, a, nece- a necessary trait for like business success or wealth. I think it's a good trait as a person because it makes you very tolerable to be around, right? Positive people are just, they're more fun to be around. But I don't think they're necessarily more like successful in business. Do you? No, I think I, I envision positive people like hippies in a drum circle in a park somewhere. They're one step away from homeless. I envision right. successful right. people are the assholes are, and their right. beamers, they're beamers, texting, they're personalities yeah. who are just playing racket. They're ruthless, and crushing other Fortune 500 companies. <laughs> totally, <laughs> totally. Was that was that a vague Gordon Gecko uh, reference? Indeed, I like it. Indeed. Uh, here's my problem with it: is that most people I know who are super positive, it's it, it was uh, a reaction. You know what I mean? It's, yes. it's part of their. It's oh, part yeah. of their. Exactly. They're actually having, reacting to neg- their own negativity. Right. They're like things aren't working out. Hold on. Let me yeah. switch gears. Let me spin it. So do you think? Yeah. Yeah. It's like PR spin usually. I so, mean, so do you and, think and the it's opposite? hard to have family members who are more positive than you. That's my situation. Like my sister is super positive. Right. And it's, you know, just be patient. Good things will come. And right. I, you know, I just want to punch people like that. Do you think the I opposite? I think I've been doing that. You know what I mean? <laughs> uh, <laughs> do you think the opposite is true, though? People experience uh, success. It just drops in their lap or whatever. So, like, you know what? Fuck everybody. Fuck the world. I'm mm-hmm. awesome. And they all suck. I, I don't no, think I think so. that they already had a predisposition, you know? Mm. It's more I, drive than... I, I, think, I think it's drive. I think they have a lot of drive. But it's also what field you're in. It's what field you're in. That's part of the problem. If you want to be... You know, really, really successful at being, you know, a stockbroker or something, you can do it. I, I mean, I could be wrong, but I don't think there's a finite number of stockbroker jobs. There is a finite number of jobs. There's too many people that want to be a writer compared to how many jobs there are for writers. That's part of the problem. Oh. So that advice on, like, you can become a writer too is already tainted. Because right. you're talking about a field that's oversaturated. Yeah, it's not being a lawyer is not oversaturated because there's endless amounts of need for lawyers. So if you want to be a lawyer, you can be, you can do it. 
Where does uh, where does stand up comedian fit in all that list? I think stand up comedian fits <laughs> in the c- category of writer. Yeah, there's too many people that want to do it. Not enough jobs. Yeah, there's go- not enough money flowing in that field for everybody to just get it if they want it. NBA basketball. Wanting it is not enough. NBA, yeah. same thing. Professional athletics. Right. That's why you never hear professional athletes giving out that advice of like, you can do it if you want it. No, you can't actually. No, there's actually a tiny number of people who can do it. And a lot of it is what physical gifts are you bringing to the table to begin with. Right. So do you also think that in the, in, in the same way that there are physical gifts that, that bring people to an elite level, there are also, let's say, intellectual gifts? Or, totally. Absolutely. Know, yeah. Yep, I do. And that's why, once again, I think that you know a lot of a lot of advice is just meaningless. I guess. What about Landmark Forum? What are your thoughts? Have that's you interesting. That? I've heard about it. I've heard about it. I don't um, know what that is? It, it's it's it, it's like sort of a, like a cultish, a very experience. organized, um, Tony Robbins like okay organization uh-huh. of of um, people selling advice, motivation, uh, keys to success. Am I right? It yeah, sounds like a cult to me. Like, I've just heard of it. Yeah, they they do this they do this uh, session and it's six hours long and it's it sounds pretty cultish. I think there was a local comedian who who went and did it and she came back and described some of it and maybe I just don't let go enough for these sort of things to take root and happen. But I don't it's, I don't need anybody to tell me like how to be motivated or how to be happy and at the same time like if I'm like miserable and depressed. That's fine. Like, I'm okay being like a, a depressed yeah. little piece of shit every once in a while. That's just life. Well, you how know? about and this? What do, you, what do you think about people that did Landmark Forum and they say it worked and they just say, look, it worked for me. Why can't I do it? What well, do you think about those people? It's fine. But I then guess. N- I mean, n- none of their outer circumstances have changed. I, or, I mean, what if they have? What if that person said, look, these are my goals. Mm-hmm. I went to Landmark Forum. I've achieved those goals, and I can show you. You can see it. It's I, I have tangible proof that I achieved them. That would what, what would you think about think those that people? I would I would take I would probably take that on board. But uh, you wouldn't you wouldn't question I whether would, those people could have done it without Landmark Forum. That's I would. a good point. I, I would question because this because is, I know people that have quit you know drinking or quit smoking or other you know deeply entrenched personal behaviors well, without the uh, without the assistance of uh, an expert. I think it's right. kind of like what I was saying. Yeah, that's exactly kind of like what I was saying. Like sometimes I'm happy, sometimes I'm not happy and nobody needs to tell me how to do that and I'm okay you with just it. Some have people want need to, a, some people you know? need a crutch, you know. Some people need a system or right. a belief or a religion or well, we got a caller from, from uh, Dallas. Oh, well, yeah. Dallas I, I, calling uh, in. I shouldn't have brought up religion. That was a that was a time bomb Hot there. Hot button topic. <laughs> there you go again. It's yeah, it's an interesting concept because the self help business is is that's the first problem with it is it's a for profit business so I don't yeah. understand why you're not supposed to be as skeptical about that as you are about Chevron you know what I mean or Amway yeah. I I mean there's a co- I used to be really into that stuff I used to work at a, like this new age bookstore in in Pasadena and they had all the you know everything from crystals to to alien pyramid technology to you know, Les Brown self help books, right? And 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 some of those are interesting. I mean, a guy like Les Brown, who was uh, in schools, was considered uh, unteachable and kind of like a special needs kid. And he, you know, he didn't learn basic arithmetic for a long time, and then he grew to be an adult, and now he's this successful motivational speaker. But it's based on his own personal life, right? So yeah. I think that's something that you can sort of believe in because you, it's sort of the same thing with, I guess. Religion, where you're you're buying into this specific person and their transformation, and if they did it, then you can do but it. But what what did Les Brown overcome specifically? You're saying he overcame a learning disability? Yeah, was like several learning disabilities, and he had you know was sort of kicking around at menial jobs in his early. Yeah, but now 20s. his whole success but is based on he... him telling that story, right? Right. So what right. do you, right. you be the next Les made... Brown or something? He like... doesn't go into detail about. Okay, then I started collecting an email list and right. speaking at the <laughs> exactly. right. the right. Eagles Lodge. But or it sounds whatever. like his success. It, but I don't have a terrible problem with him if if he's if he's telling everybody. I had a learning disability. This is how I overcame my learning disability. Mm-hmm. At least it's specific. I like that. I like that it's not vague. Right. But to me, unless I had a child with a learning disability, I don't know why I'd be listening to, to Les Brown. Yeah, right. I mean, why? I would, don't know what he would have to impart on me. It's inspiring in and of itself. It's kind of motivating. You know, like the way you know what you, 
Did you get inspired by Forrest Gump the first time you saw Forrest Gump? I was kind of like, wow, look at this. This this uh, brought you to tears, right? It just <laughs> I mean, I almost <laughs> cried. I Serafina was more of a tearjerker than Forrest Gump. I was Gump. inspired by Jenny. I actually did heroin that uh, nice. later that week. <laughs> but radio. Radio um, was a good one. No, I yeah, yes, I think Forrest Gump does have um elements. An interesting message. Yeah. Uh, I mean I'll but I do like the message of basically like, look, opportunity will favor you if you let it. Right. You know, if you have the right attitude to things and you stop questioning everything and you just pursue things, then sometimes things come your way. Yeah. Um, and I do like that message. And, and again, that message is no different than the message of, you know, Swami Yogananda Paramhansa or whatever his name was. Right. Who was, you know, uh, an Indian yogi who came to the... Southern California and spread that message, uh, which is basically being open and receptive and not uh, just being negative. Seems like a lot of right. those swamis. Is it good things will happen? Is right. It, is it just me or were, 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 didn't a lot of those swamis inevitably end up embroiled in some sort of scandal? Like, wasn't Osho like well, there? There was a huge one. There was a Vanity Fair article about one of the big, big yogis. Who is is became you know like a very very wealthy because he franchised everything. Yeah, and yeah. he was he accused like his of own sexual army of, harassment. Yeah, and he had a bunch of Rolls Royces and yes. like they had to send. Yeah, exactly. But but that now that that splinters off to a different topic, which is I think why do these people become? Why do we end up worshiping these people? Because well, again, because you can't give anybody too much power to begin with. I think it's so, a, it's a sociopathic type of thing where you 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 know. You, deep down, you have some sort of drive to be a personality cult. Well, I think maybe. I think, you know, why do we have to follow that? Yeah, I think then maybe. That's fine, but because why, it's, does, uh, it's why can't the public, just, ma- why the public just go, fine, thanks for the message, but, you know, we're, take care. We're not, we're not worshiping uh, well, you. We're I, not treating actually, you special. Actually, I think ultimately the problem is the majority of the people out there don't have any faith in themselves. They, they don't have any faith in their own ability to pull themselves up out of their own circumstances and morat. They always feel yeah. like somebody's got to help me. Somebody's got to come along. Somebody's got to okay, write a Rush book. Okay, Rush Limbaugh, jeez. Hey, no, I'm, I'm just, just you know, There's an interesting case when we were talking about uh, those swamis. I read a thing. Uh, uh, this guy in India, he's a very wealthy uh, spiritual guru, and um, he's, he's employed in a, in, a, in a legal battle. Well, his followers are because uh, they claim that he's in a state of deep meditation, uh, but he, like he has no pulse, or he, he's either he's dead. Basically. Okay. <laughs> he is, okay. But his followers are claiming he's in a state of deep meditation. His he's, career he's skyrockets samadhi, after he dies. They right. call it in, in the yogi terminology. Uh, but they're keeping him. They have him frozen in a commercial freezer at their ashram. What? Right. <laughs> I've not yes. heard this. So his wow. career really God, skyrocketed. No, that, that's after not he died. false worship. Uh, if I ever heard it. I, so where does that fall into the into the discussion? I mean, I think the same thing. I, I don't know why people people keep wanting to worship other people and thinking those people are better than them. I, I don't even if somebody is better than you, go ahead and acknowledge that person's. I acknowledge Brad Pitt is better than me. He is. In what I'll way? admit, in every single way you can imagine. Listen, He's Andrew, better than me. Andrew, you got to believe in <laughs> yourself. Yeah, no, I don't man. know if I but would not be able to open that. your heart. But I am okay with it. I'm okay with it. And if Brad Pitt walked in here, I wouldn't worship him. I'd just be like, hey, dude, how you doing? Good to meet you. That's it. There's no worship. Somebody could be better than you without you worshiping them. Well, what about, uh, and I guess we're going in deep on this, but uh, did you guys ever hear about that? They were calling him the Buddha boy or whatever, that kid in India where he just like wandered off and decided he was going to meditate for Two, three, four. Next thing you know, it's like six weeks, and supposedly he's not eating. He's just sitting under this tree, like in a deep state of meditation. And this huge crowd, like, started to show up to like first to just see if it was real, yeah. but then Is this like a David Blaine stunt. No, it's That's a true recreated. story. It happened. It happened like three or four years ago. It's a little old. And then finally, what happened was this whole cottage industry sprung up around this kid. Like pe- tourists would come, and so these guys would show up and sell like beads and whatever. Yeah. And then like all this garbage follows, and like it's just this kid sitting under a tree. And now there's like tens of thousands of people out there just trashing the place. Like, yeah, this whole industry sprung up around it. They opened up a bank account. And next thing you know, like millions of dollars are going in this bank account. And then to really like confuse matters, suddenly the kid just got up and walked away in the middle of the night. Nobody knew where he went. He just like wandered off, and he showed. Really? Yeah, and he showed up like six months later, like wearing a potato sack in some village, and uh, he was like, "Yeah, I just 
there was all these people and I just kind of, you know, it was weird. So I just left. I got and like now there's this whole like abandoned cottage industry that's trying to follow him around. And like they totally tried story. to like corporatize him and he, yeah. he really yeah, they, did they, just they, want to meditate. They call him he, Buddha boy. Yeah. Festival, it was a religious burning man. Yeah, right. pretty much. And doctors from like Europe came out to try to like test to see if he really wasn't eating. But his handlers wouldn't let him get close. And right. this, there's this big controversy. It turned into a whole thing. If you Google Buddha boy, it's a whole the, like story. Man. Bieber of Buddhas. Yeah, I guess, man. That's how it works over there, you know. protecting him and handling him. I love it. And all he did was go sit under a tree for a couple right. weeks. Next thing you know, he's huge. I, I don't right. know. I guess that's how it works over there in India. But, uh, yeah, I followed that story for a while. It was really... And then he just kind of... You don't hear anything about it anymore. I don't know. Yeah. Maybe he's like, you know, smoking cigarettes, dealing dime bags outside of an arcade somewhere right. in Punjabi. Probably, I don't know. He plays now. drums now. Yeah, and he plays, band. yeah, you know. Yeah. <laughs> so... That's I don't I don't know if we want to get off this topic, but I I think it's sort of related. Um, this phenomenon, you know, I'm not the first one to bring it up, but how people because um, people need to do this on Facebook, right? They need to show you that their lives are good. Yes, and I would argue that it's mostly fake, right? They're not they're not really feeling that good. They're not having that good of a time. Yeah, and it's, so it's an avatar. Right, I right. Think it's a, and it's just fascinating that most of people's nights become documenting what the night is. Uh, yeah. yeah, most I, of the night is let's take a picture of everything we're doing. That that becomes the event. I don't have I, mean, I don't have a Facebook page. I don't have an Instagram account. I yeah. don't have any of that stuff. And every time I talk to somebody who, for whatever reason, some sort of Facebook experience is on the forefront of their mind, right. it always seems like the most shallow, asinine, like, fabricated drama imaginable, you it, know? Like, but, it, but see, it is sometimes. It's not everybody. It's not everybody. There's a lot of people on Facebook that use it for different reasons. There's a lot of people that do have political agendas. Well, they want to push and I've, agenda, had so many, I've had so many comics tell me, oh, you got to get on Facebook so you can network and branch out and get more, like, fans right. or whatever. And then, but, but at least that makes sense, though. At least that But then these are the same name. people who come to me whenever they talk about Facebook. It's usually some stupid, like, whatever. I'm like, really? Yeah. Is that what you're using it for? Or are you just taking pictures of your lunch? Like, I don't understand. But, but what, what do you think about that? People that that has become their life is documenting what they are doing. I get, I get it. I get the hot girl phenomenon that yes, wants to constantly yeah. show of. everybody right. I'm hot. I understand that. Mm-hmm. I'm not talking about I'm on board people. with that. I'm talking about the people that literally are just like, no, I just want to show you what I'm doing all the time. Even though what I'm doing, I'm not even that into. It's just attention whoring, you know. I hate, hate, hate the idea that you can put my name into Google and, like, stuff pops up, you know. I'm not that person. Everybody else, though, it seems like they want the Internet to be all about them, you know, with their Facebook and their Instagram and all this other. And that, like, really But But I guess I wonder, though, but but when you you realize it doesn't work, don't you stop? When you realize it doesn't work, I understand, I would understand the addiction of... Like, yeah, I posted a bunch of stuff on Facebook, and now I have all kinds of people that message me, Uh and they invite me to parties. But that doesn't usually happen. So don't those people get tired of doing it? People, well, you'll have to talk. I I don't even do it at all. I also think it's a way just to experience yourself in a different way. I mean, when, when Facebook, before Facebook, there was MySpace, and, you know, it's just a new, uh, avenue of, of, uh, sharing yourself i guess but i think like like any endeavor that that human beings get involved in it gets um well maybe you know maybe most people are socially inept you know they just can't sit down and have a conversation so it's easier to like be at home late at night on their computer like posting pictures of their food and what and talking but they're doing it as they're out though that's what cracks me up they're doing it as they're socializing that becomes to me that that leads me to the question like are you doing that just to document it later, or are you doing it because you truly enjoy this exactly. activity or experience? That's my question. <laughs> yeah, and I would submit to you that I think uh, for people that you notice a trend where they are addictively posting things, it is more just to share or 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 to you know to put it out there. You right. know what I mean? Yeah, because to me, that would seem to interfere with the experience. Uh, getting back to. That's my sort point. Of new that's age my terms point. It inter- of being in the now, the well, being in the moment. And that's and you're what like, I'm. Well, hold on. 
hold on, we got to get a picture. Well, you know, and, and that's what I'm saying about here. people being socially inept. Because even though they're doing it while they're out and about, they're still staring at their phones the whole time they're out and yeah. about with everybody. You know, like yeah. when civilization collapses and the aliens land, they will know all about our tasty sandwiches and pinch it for alcohol. I guess that'll be that, yeah, that'll be the will. record that will leave. See a lot of pictures. That'll of be the mark. Yeah, I mean, exactly. probably the aliens are like sandwiches and they're alcoholics too. Though. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they, yeah, that's true. They have pictures of their weird alien food. I, I, let's let's go back to where we were talking about before, because I want your take on Deepak Chopra. I don't like because he's a fascinating I, industry. I used to like him. I thought he was uh, uh, comforting and was more middle of the road right. philosophy in it, terms. Isn't of he showing up do on what like you can do? But in addition to uh, you know working at Quiznos. And posting to Instagram also adopt a new set of principles that might help you. Right? You know. Isn't isn't he like showing up on Doctor Oz and Doctor well, Phil? Well, he he's had his own that, spir- he's had his own evolution as a spiritual. He has. Figure. And what is what is he it's doing changed. lately? I guess is my point. I, I thought know, I saw. What's, did, what's did his he write message? a book with Fifty Cent or someone <laughs> else? Did a no? I'm being serious. Someone no. did. Yeah. A Are you new serious? I think thing. I think he did a rap with Ja Rule. If I'm <laughs> not mistaken. Well, his previous I think he's dating Rihanna now. <laughs> Have you heard his collab with Mystical? No. <laughs> it's fire. Did I say that right? I fire. Don't know how, how the kids talk. I heard he punched uh, Floyd Mayweather. <laughs> <D-Bank> <laughs> <Cobra. laughs> well, they were at a fat burger hanging out. But but he's part of an industry, another industry that I think is is fascinating. I could be wrong because I haven't lit, well, is seen he Deepak doctor? Chopra. Is he a real doctor? Probably. I assume he's got a Dr. PhD Oz, in something. He's a real doctor. Then there's Deepak Chopra, who is sort of the metaphysical right. uh, PhD. You know what but I mean? But that's, that's another sort of industry I have a problem with. Is the uh, quote science industry that's about the science of possibility. Right. So they're talking about these things that are possible. So you have no way to refute them. It's literally like our brain, we have not even tapped into it. Okay, so, and can you tell us how? Do you, are you furthering research? Is something on the horizon? You know what I mean? Right. It's like a nothingness. It's just literally this airy, dreamy, like, wouldn't that be neat? If you use that part of your brain where you could see into the future, okay, so what are you talking about? You're literally selling us on, on hope. Do you think astral projection is real? Well, I, haven't, I haven't seen proof of it. Have you? Have, have you? Uh, no, I guess I haven't. But I think the proof is you have to do it yourself. You have to meditate for a super long time, and then you can able to uh, project your astral body that will yeah. sort of float around... You know, almost in a, a you know lucid dreaming type sense, where you're right. able to. But then what? <clears throat> like even just... that that experience in and of itself is fulfilling and leads you to new found uh, truths truths that you can apply to your daily life, you which ultimately I think is about um, you know moral and ethical things, like treating others with love and kindness is only possible after you've astral projected yourself. To uh, you know, some of Saturn's satellite moons or whatever. Yeah. You know what? I hate to get too like corny about it, but in terms of like experiences that are worthwhile for the experience itself, uh, one of the few things that I have direct personal experience with in that arena is stand-up comedy. Like, I, for some reason, like I mean, like I said, okay, maybe you can astral project and you float around. If that happened to me, I'd be like, well, you know, that was weird. But you know, maybe I'll, what's on TV? It right? happens you to know? you every night you, when you sleep and you're dreaming. You're you're leaving your physical body and you are inhabiting your astral ethereal body. Yeah, I don't know. I think the closest I've ever come to a spiritual experience or just something where it just seemed like worthwhile just to be doing it is on stage when it goes well. Have you, you ever know? gone surfing? Uh, no, I. But uh, that's because I have a, a deep desire to not go surfing. Basically. Why are you afraid of water? I'm not or afraid of open, water, be but open. I, I just like I don't want to like. Would Forrest Gump surf? Yeah, exactly. I think you See, would. Well, I don't know. I, I uh, actually, I, I went to snorkeling once on a vacation, and uh, I remember very clearly. First, I was standing in the water, and I wasn't on board, and I didn't feel like doing this, but I had the mask on, so I happened to look down in the water, 
and I saw all these terrifying creatures like scurrying about on the. F- and that's the only reason I started swimming was, it was like cool, this right? self. Pre- no, I was I was just self preservation at that point. There was like snakes and fish and eels and weird shit. They won't and, like, hurt you, man. I don't know, man. So I'm not, you know. So uh, dude, you're gonna walk past. 15 junkies and <laughs> yeah, people with knives. Those are my people, uh, though. Those are my people. You get out of here. <laughs> Look at me. They they see me, and those they're just people? like, yeah, they're like, keep they're it moving, guys. You. Yeah, they're okay. like, don't, don't, don't like, linger hey, around here. this is my here, corner, you know? man. Yeah. This is where I collect. <laughs> so, you know. Coins. Out there on the bocce ball courts in front of the, the club there. I don't know. Stand-up's all I need. That's all I'm saying. And I'm not even particularly good at it. But, uh, you know, I don't need Bibles and churches and, and motivational speakers and but swamis. But that's because and you've already had those, right? See, um, see, I have a thing because I didn't grow up with religion. And, you know, you do comedy and you're on comics who they were raised with religion or their dad was a preacher of some kind. And, they, and you can see that it's become such a deep-seated need to, like, to, like they have a problem. that they, they have an axe to grind or an agenda, you know. And I was never raised that way. So, to me, it's an interesting phenomenon where I'm like, dude, just get over it. Like, it's, you know what I mean? It, it was like, it's like yeah. getting bullied in junior high. Hey, it happened to all of us. Let's... Let's move forward with this. Yeah, I wasn't raised in it. Unless you were the bullier. I mean, I wasn't. I got bullied. Although you're right, a lot of bully, a lot of bulliers were bullied by somebody. Yeah, I think and we've all been bullied. A bullier. We've yeah. all been bullied at some well, point. Sure, you know, and and more to your point, uh, comics in general are damaged people. They're t- they're terrible, terrible individuals. Or they're just the people that you know life. are damaged because they're willing to. That's what put I it think. Out to an, I think to they're a just. World. I think they're just more open about their damage. Yeah, most people are damaged people. Most people that go definitely people that go into the arts. Definitely people that go into the type A businesses, doctors, lawyers, stockbrokers. They're damaged. That's why they're so driven. Yeah, you know, that's yeah. why they're so hungry for quote success, you know, material success. Yeah, or a guy with a facial tattoo. He's got something going on. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> unless no, it's that a classy guy's perfectly, facial tattoo. <laughs> that guy was raised in a healthy environment with a lot of hugs. <laughs> oh man. Yeah, I, I guess there's no such thing as a classy facial tattoo. There's just it's uh, no matter what you try to do. I mean, Mike Tyson's has grown on me. At first, I, I was like, "Wow, right. that's, yeah." Uh, but, that's na- Mike but now Tyson, I'm kind of like, you know, like, you know he. But, but he could. That's pull almost that like off, an ancient though. Maori warrior thing, you know. But, he, that's but he's, I see he's a commodity. You know what I mean? Yeah. Famous people are more like a business. They're a brand. They're yeah. a brand. So I don't even see his tattoo as on a person. I see it as a logo. Right. It's a logo. It's, like it's the literally Nike a swish. logo. That's Mike Tyson's logo. Yeah. Well, if you can come back from biting the ear off of Vander Holyfield, then from Listen, that point Vander on, Holyfield anything. was headbutting him. I don't think. I mean, so he, he was it. frustrated. He, hey, the, Vander Holyfield I, stuck his ear in Mike Tyson's mouth. <laughs> I mean, all right, what? he deserved it. He had him coming to him. You're right. You're right. That the ear bite was totally legit. That was. I don't know. Maybe he overacted. I think. I'm just saying. I, I don't know. But he he over, somehow like now he's adorable. Ever like whatever happened to Vander Holyfield? You never hear about that. Did guy anybody anymore. see Mike Tyson's? Uh, one man show because I heard it's pretty amazing. You know, I I, I, know I got it on Netflix. Show. They it's the one that Spike Lee did, and uh, it, it's sort of I didn't get all the way through it, but um, you know, it opens with Mike Tyson sitting there, and there's like this uh, white walled backdrop with like a hanging microphone, and and Mike Tyson sitting there, and uh, it's just kind of like you know, like welcome to my inner thought palace. It's yeah. just it's very <laughs> yeah, you know. And there's tigers and lions in the background. This is the bedroom of my mind, you know, and, as you, and then he proceeds to tell you about himself. I, I didn't watch all of it. It's kind of interesting, but you can tell that someone helped him write it because right. there's some opening jokes that are kind of like, sure, you know, yeah. You, you, you could tell someone wrote. Yeah, Mike wrote Tyson. Some... Mike Tyson didn't do the open mic circuit before <laughs> boxing. Yeah, <laughs> right. He didn't brush up his comedy chops. Thank you. It's great to be here, boy. I uh, just flew in from New York, and you know. Yeah, yeah. No, there's... totally. He had a uh, right. Yeah, yeah. He built some gigantic mansion. I want to say somewhere in Michigan or something, and then like his whole career fell apart, and he just abandoned it. And to this day, it's kind of out in the middle of the country, and it's almost like one of those like uh, what do they call them? Like urban people are squatting there and stuff. Yeah, right? and they take pictures and post it online, and it's just like yeah. this huge like mansion that time forgot or whatever. Yeah. It just sits there. Have you there. seen uh, some of these? Um, they might be on a Tumblr or something, but these drug lords down in Mexico, they'll. They they'll raid this compound and and I get they're gone or whatever but 
these drug lords in Mexico have the most amazing compound. It's like a mansion, and then downstairs there's like a built-in grotto yeah. with a pool. I'll, and- I'll interject with what my dad would say here. Man, I'm in the wrong business. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, no, they have these incredible compounds. Yeah, and, you know, it's like this underground grotto. Right. With, it's like a Playboy mansion, yeah. Yeah, exactly, with wrought iron. You know, there's like little, uh, you know, white Siberian tigers that are placed right. in cages next to the pool. And sure there's maybe be. 25 of these tigers in the world, and four of them are at this drug uh, totally. lord's mansion. <laughs> right, right. You know, and they, they, you know, there's like millions of dollars in every conceivable cupboard and nook and cranny. You know, the silverware drawer is just full of money and... I mean, it's just the most amazing. Uh, well, well, fuck this Les Brown But what, but what shit. were you this saying? Can... They, they become yeah. abandoned eventually? Well, I've, maybe they were caught or it was raided or some other. They had some sort of drug lord shootout. Right. You know, God, but... the drug lord business is so unstable. <laughs> you know? It's, 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 it's a tough you what, Here today, gone today. Business, right? Man. Yeah. Well, fuck this Les Brown Swami shit. You just got to sell drugs in Mexico. Market. Like this. Listen, you got to, yeah. I mean, build a coca leaf have a coca leaf field and you know so and think positive then, those are the two keys then what don't don't they auction off the compound or whatever when, once it's seized i mean i would assume so but it's in mexico so i mean i'm, I'm sure it becomes government property with which is essentially drug lord property anyway so it probably it's just a non it's just a yeah circulating door <laughs> There's a really good documentary about this sort of. It's called Narco Cultura, and they, you know, they show all these guys. They have these amazing uh, mausoleums, right. which are bejeweled and bedazzled, right. and and their guns. They have their guns. Yeah, they're bedazzled. like 24 karat gold, uh, right. covered AK 47s, yeah, and everything. And and then there's this whole business of these like, um, you know, uh, musical folk singer guys who are like, you know, like what's it called? They like boom, 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 boom. They have like the whole right. What's the music boom, called? Boom, boom, boom. I don't, I don't, <laughs> I don't you know. know they have man. like a tuba doing the bass line. Is, is it's a Taylor Swift song? You just yes, did? that's what it is. Um, it's that new Nicki Minaj thing. You, you, you mean there's an industry of music that... Centered around glorifying... Glorifying these, the these guys and this culture. And yeah, right. we, call that, we call that rap music in America, right? I mean, right. So just without the mariachi backup band. There you go, mariachi. <laughs> well, hey, some people Think would argue that that the... whole cocaine industry, especially when it came up in the 80s, some people would argue that that sort of indirectly resulted in the whole stand-up comedy like infrastructure that sprang up in the, in the States. You know, Back in the 80s when comedy clubs were popping up on every corner everywhere, I would posit that maybe... Most of those clubs were cocaine funded, you know, and a lot of those comics were getting. Well, we paid. all know the entire city of Miami was basically yeah. built. That's how it became yeah. a, a major metropolitan city. Yeah, cocaine, cocaine cowboys. Cocaine money. So they called the. the yeah. There was a movie about that. But, no, but it was yeah. interesting that it may never have become a major, yeah. major economic power without that to fund its beginnings. Well, it, it almost. And you're seems... arguing that 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 happened on a small scale with all of comedy clubs. Yeah, I think that uh, back in the '80s, and uh, co- uh, cocaine was sort of a big thing, you know. I mean, and comedy clubs were popping up all over the place. I mean, I would all of these guys were jacked up on coke, and you hear stories of industry. I mean, even sure. if you watch Scarface, sure, sure, you know, sure, sure. But comedy was a part of it. Hang out at, and it seems like in the know. late '80s, early '90s, cocaine kind of fell out of fashion, you know. And well, uh, it's just like any, and, and then the comedy club started closing down all it's over like the anything, place. Though. I mean, even like the porn industry is subtly financed by uh, the mafia. The, uh, you know, really? I mean, yeah, I, I think, would think the porn think industry doesn't need any like because there's so many people out there that just you know want to want a jacket that you know <laughs> they now, don't make money. But back then, before all the explosions, mm. right? Yeah, yeah. back in when the, it was in the 90s, people were not masturbating a lot. <laughs> <laughs> it's a, that, it's that a new thing. Yeah, now the post internet's 92, out there. Too, masturbation really took off. <laughs> you know, I, just, I don't know. That's <laughs> when we finally had the technology to masturbate properly. Really, that's what happened there. I don't know. Yeah. Big sports fan, Joe? Uh, no, I, I, you know, I don't understand sports. You know, I just, 
it's there's no end game, you know. Like you even have a the, the little, finals. Uh, is there, the there's game. there actually is an end game. That's, <laughs> that's the whole what point. We love about it. I don't. I don't that's mean what we there's love about it. It's so concrete. I don't mean there's no game at the end of the whole season. I just mean like at the end of the day, it's a bunch of dudes just like running around chasing a ball. You know, like my dog chases a ball. Like I don't. It's like yeah, I but can your dog dunk from the free throw right, line? Right. I, I, I doubt your dog knows how to run. A, knows how to run a, a you know. I'm not saying my dog can roll. Uh, totally. I'm not totally. saying my dog dog is the greatest athlete in the United States. I'm just saying that like, run count. a pyramid offense. That that's just as entertaining to me to watch my dog chase a ball as it is a handful of dudes. Like I don't know. Maybe Have there's you ever some gone sort to of... a live sporting event. Those are pretty fun. I mean I, I think that's part of the appeal. Like yeah. is going to games. Well, I mean but watching here's on TV is See, I think TV's a better experience now than for the game. basketball, I agree. I well, for all games it's baseball, better. Baseball, you'd rather watch a baseball game on so, TV than oh, the well, I mean, baseball, the... you're you're not first of all you are getting, we know this already, I'm not saying anything new, you're getting 15 times the camera angles that you are than if you're at the game live. Well, see, that's the okay. thing. I made the horrible mistake of, yes, I have been to live sporting events. I made the horrible mistake of seeing the Chicago Cubs play live at, like, Wrigley Field, you know, which okay, is Okay, so now I understand your, your horrible aversion <laughs> to sports. <laughs> there you go. You, it, was just, uh, it was like the most miserable four hours of my life. Like, what am I doing here? It just long. doesn't make any sense. It's you long, know? I know. Well, it's, your choices were that or a Holocaust documentary. That's true, and I made a see, terrible see, mistake. See, to me, I think sporting events falls under the category of um, false happiness again. I think people feel like it's more exciting because it's supposed to be more exciting since you're oh, there. Oh, man, you should have when, been here when the Seahawks won the Super Bowl. Like, the, suddenly it was like the entire town yeah, there's somehow over a had people some who are subscribing right, to, to you know? what you're talking about. Yeah, like, no, 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 no. I think the experience is, my point is, it's just as good it's when you watch it. At home with family and friends. I think we've been duped into thinking it's better if you're seeing it live. And you're not convincing me that it is. On TV, it's just as good. It's just, you get the commentary. Every, it's, everything's see, I don't better like on the commentary. TV. I actually I watch sports it. with the volume off. I tell you what, here's... I find that's misleading. Like they start talking. Like if you're watching college basketball, they'll start talking about how the point guard is dedicating his senior year to his high school coach who died of cancer, <laughs> and all this stuff is going on. And I just want to watch the game. I don't need to know right. these well, human interests. God, pieces. I know. I, I hate those people that donate their time to no. cancer. Here, here's the here's, God. Listen. Why do we have to hear about them? Uh, speaking of which, this pink yeah. ribbon business. Come on, people. No. You know, I, I go to see. I I like the human drama of sports, okay. and that answers your question. A lot of people that don't get sports or don't like it, they don't they don't realize the human drama involved in it. It's not just if you're watching it just to see who won or lost, you miss out on a lot of the emotional elements of it. Yeah, for me, the thing is like there is one sport I guess that I kind of watch a lot, and that's UFC. Whenever UFC is in town or in the area, I'll go. But the funny thing is, like, whether it's better on TV or not, even when I go to the UFC live events, one of the first things I do is they have these little uh, radio sets that you can buy and you put in your ear and you can hear the color commentary. Well, I, that's, like, the first thing I do. Like, I don't want to just sit there in silence watching these guys beat the crap out of each other. I agree. Like, I, I, I like the commentary. The, I think you're getting huh. experts breaking it down, analyzing it, talking about it. You know, and telling then, you and things then you also that you're not get noticing. Charles Barkley. And, and ultimately, the UFC... Yeah, I mean, I understand what you're saying. You Sometimes you get needless tidbits. Yeah. Well, and the thing is with the UFC, now there's something that has an end game. Somebody's going to get the shit kicked out of them, right? Like, that is more right. visceral to me than I'm going to sit here for okay, four hours. Okay, you need someone to nearly die. Okay. Yeah, then I'm entertained, you, you, you know? I, I don't want to... Yeah, I don't okay. want to sit there for four hours and maybe the score's 2-0 after right. that, you if know? If it was up like, to you, you know, we'd still be feeding, you know... Look, it's perfect. POWs to Tigers, it, It's right? perfect because what happens is these two guys come out, they just wail on each other for five minutes, and that's about the length of my attention span. So they take a break, and a half-naked chick walks around. So suddenly I'm back on board. Good point. Then they come out for another five minutes. It doesn't last any more than 15 minutes, and then they move on to the next match. That I'm on board. I can do all that. I'm just high enough to, like, focus on that. None of this four-hour, two-hour shit. I agree with that. I can't do my that. My only problem with the UFC, though, is that I'm a big boxing fan, and I also like K1, where they're allowed to kick and knee, and it's... Yeah. It's, it's like K1 is like Street Fighter, but I, for real. They have Russian guys fighting little Thai, Muay Thai fighters. Yeah, I'll watch and, a lot of those oh, yeah. old Pride dope. videos. Right. You, you, need UFC. you need different ethnicities to fight. <laughs> yeah, I need, I need a guy who can throw <laughs> okay. a fireball or I'm not, right. I'm not okay. involved. I'm not emotionally invested. But my problem with UFC, though, is that it starts off like a fight and then there's way too much Gracie Jiu-Jitsu and it's these invisible arm bars for three and a half minutes right. that lead to a submit and... Sometimes, like, there's some good ones, like when Maisha Tate got her arm broken. I mean, I can watch that. 
you know. <laughs> well, why don't why don't we just have the NBA start allowing <laughs> yeah. the kneeing? It's kicking. almost at it's that almost to that point. I mean, man. Jesus we watched the game yesterday. Yeah. When Stevenson throws a, a just a running bitch slap, uh, he, he into close that dude's lined, face. Yeah, yeah. He close line. North did you see Cole. the one with uh, who's the guy for the Timberwolves? That that white guy for the Timberwolves who like did a flying elbow into LeBron James's neck. Like I think the first Kevin Love did that. No, not Kevin Love. I don't. I don't know the dude's name, but uh, I believe it was the Timberwolves. See, I, I don't know. Outside of UFC, I don't know. The only basketball. I mean, but uh, trivia. it's getting pretty flagrant in the in the NBA. This playoffs has been pretty. I think it's been pretty high stakes. It's been exciting. Well, but they, they the league has cracked down on rough play so much in the last couple decades. So much. No, really. So, uh, yeah. you, do you think Bill Russell and Chamberlain were probably pretty dirty, like throwing? Throwing elbows. I don't think they were dirty because they did stuff within the rules, but I think it was rougher under the hoop. Yeah, huh. I think fouls were harder. Huh. I think it was harder to get called for a flagrant foul. It was just were a guys blowing foul. knees back in the day like that? Like in the seventies, was world be free tearing an ACL? And I mean, do, do you think injuries have increased? In, in I do think injuries have increased because I think people lift weights too aggressively. Oh. And I think weights are really, really hard on the body. They're not natural. Oh. We're not made to have four hundred pounds on your back. And then kneel, you know, squat down ten times in a row. Yeah. We're not made for that. Yeah. That's, that's it just hurts your flexibility, yeah. and yeah. it makes your body too big for itself. You're not supposed to be that big. Yeah, yeah I am completely anti-exercise. That is just a <laughs> I didn't fucking say you're supposed tell. to exercise. <laughs> bad, you know, bad, with, with, bad, the, with the cut jeans and the Crocs, it's I, true, I, I man. Gather. It's all I can do to stay seated. You know, I'm just saying, like even jogging, that's not good for you. I know so many people who have been runners their whole lives, and then now they they just regret See, it. See, I think jogging is is good for you because obviously cardio. We we were made to run. Yeah, but it bangs your joints up. I know, but we're, but we're not made to run on concrete. Yeah, that's the difference. Yeah. we're made to run on grass yeah. and dirt and sand and. Yeah. Because I can think of so many ways. I mean, if it's just about the cardio, like, you know, give me 15 minutes on Red Tube or whatever. I'll get my cardio up. It's no problem. I don't mean? need to do. Red Tube, come on now. It's, is a, a, porn it's a porn site. We don't want to be explicit. Yeah, apparently. Uh, listen, uh, this is a PG show we're running here. All right, I, I didn't realize I'm the only person familiar with the most popular porn site. Yeah. On I guess I was thinking Redbox or something. I was thinking some sort of like a Hulu thing. Um well, you know, I, I like to jump rope. That's a good form of exercise. That's it's amazing. kind of a full body exercise. That's and amazing exercise. There's not a lot of it's it's what they call what you're talking about, which is low impact. Yeah, yeah. You know, jo- running is more like a medium to high. I mean, I sometimes I've been running and I'll I'll be done the next day. My knee is mm-hmm. killing me so hard. On but your with knees. jump rope, I don't. I never have yeah. ill effects. That's a good. It's form. A love about surfing, low yeah. impact. Yeah, it's just swimming. Yeah, best exercise: walking in a pool. <laughs> that's all you need. Just just walk so, in the so right. So if you're under sixty, yeah. it's humiliating. <laughs> no, you, <laughs> you know, it's just you and senior way. citizens right, doing, you know, right. doing well, you know, shoulder rolls in the pool at the you, community you, you center. You meet right, available Joe? women, so you know there's another benefit to the whole. Well, they, thing. and they just got to have a long term relationship. Exactly. So, you know, they're you widowed, know. so they probably have a decent 401k. So you know. Mm. All right, so uh, we've gone about a, about a tight sixty for the tight sixty podcast here. Uh, Andrew, is there anything you want to you pimp or? Uh, I had a great you... time. Uh, just to Facebook me, Andrew Norelli, comedian Andrew Norelli. I know it sounds stupid to have comedian in your name, but that's because there's, believe it or not, a couple other Andrew Norelli. So comedian Andrew Norelli, Facebook friend request me, and I'll let you know when I'm in your city. And Twitter that's is uh, like uh, at Andrew Norelli, right? Is yeah, that your Twitter handle. Yeah, Fa- and, uh... Facebook is better because I find that I can track people in the region they're in better. With Facebook, mm-hmm. so Facebook's preferred. And how's the tour going? Uh, after Seattle, you're heading after to... After uh, Seattle, I go to San Francisco, where I started comedy. Oh, nice. Do some gigs there, and then I go to uh, Santa Barbara, do some shows oh, there. All, all this stuff you'll you'll hear and see on my Facebook. Cool. Wow, no pictures fantastic. of food. That's my promise to you. <laughs> no pictures of food. Well, I'm out then. Forget it. I, yeah. I don't even... Yeah. Unsubscribe. <laughs> <laughs> all right, James, anything, any parting shots of wisdom? Anything from uh, any of the yogis that you've been following? I just want to or... say, you know, to, to all four of our listeners, uh, just believe in yourself. <laughs> uh, open your heart to new experiences. And, uh, you know, read, uh, read a Les Brown book. It, it, it can change your life. I love change it. your life. All right, Andrew. Well, thanks again thanks for joining for us. Me. This Thank is Type 60 Podcast, and uh, we're out.